Hello everybody. Alrighty, so we're going to be jumping into our ball and tail animation exercise now. Alright, so we're going to be starting from scratch. I'm inside of Illustrator at the moment. Okay, so let's just go from the very beginning. File, new, and we are going to be making a 1920 by 1080. Alright, my template looks very different over here. That's because this is a not exactly legal <coughs> um, copy of Illustrator, but that's fine. There we go. We've now got it over here, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so that we can see what we're working with. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is jump over to our shape layer and grab the ellipse tool. And I can click and drag, all right? So I'm holding down shift to get my perfect circle the same way that we do in After Effects. But the nice thing about Illustrator is that by holding down Alt at the same time, I scale from the center of where I've clicked rather than dragging away from the point of click. All right, so this is just like a little tool that I can then use. Holding down spacebar, I can move this circle around. And I'm just gonna have it over here for now. Let go and um, V for my selection tool and I'm just gonna select my circle. Let's make it an orange and we're gonna get rid of the stroke. Okay, and I've got a circle. Right, I'm gonna rename this layer. I double click on the layer name and I'm gonna name this body. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna do is using my pen tool. I am going to just quickly pen out a tail. All right, so I'm gonna click to make a point, click and drag to get this nice little curve going on. And then I'll click on that point to close it, click over here to close that shape and I can drag it out like so. Okay, it's looking fairly symmetrical. And I now have a tail. But it's on the same layer as the body. So if I were to take this inside of After Effects, right, anything I did to the ball would happen to the tail and we wouldn't be able to animate it. So I need to put the tail onto a new layer. I can simply do that by in my layers panel. Right, we see our body over here. I can turn it on and off. Okay. If I click this little new layer button, I get layer two. I select my tail and I get this little blue square. This blue square, if I hit the drop down, represents the tail. And I can drag that square and drop it onto layer two. And I can rename this as tail. Now, tail is on a separate layer. Alrighty, um, ball looks a little bit big, so I'm just gonna hold down shift and rescale the tail so that this is a very bushy tailed fox that we're working with. All right, in my mind, this is a fox. Okay, then I'm gonna hit control shift or command shift S to bring up my save option, I'm gonna call this uh, ball and tail two, because this is the second time I'm doing this, because audio sometimes likes to not work with us. I've now saved it, I'm done inside of Illustrator. I'll keep it open, all right? But we're not gonna be making any changes, I'm just gonna minimize it. I'm gonna jump back into After Effects and you can see that I've just finished our ball and tail animation exercise. Alrighty, in my project panel, I'm going to double click, alternatively file, import file and I'm going to navigate to my illustrator layer ball and tail 2 all right so I've selected it and I want to make sure that my import as option is set to composition retain layer size it's very important I click that I say import and it's done we now have a composition right it's already done for us I can just double click this and I'm inside of my comp okay nice and easy I've got my tail layer and I've got my body layer Boom. Alrighty, so it's very big, all right? And I don't wanna worry about uh, sort of getting the scaling issues wrong. So I'm just going to parent the tail to the body and I'm gonna right click new null object and I'm going to parent the body to the null. And I'm just gonna hit S to bring out the scale and I'm gonna scale down my null. Now, notice that as I scale up and down my null, it does not affect the scale of my tail. All right, it rhymes, boom, I'm a poet of my age. Um, it's been a long day, I apologize. Okay, so we're just gonna make it a little bit more manageable. We want a smaller character so it can really jump in this space. And once we've got that, I'm going to then Delete that null because we don't need it. I'm going to drag down reference using my rulers for a floor guide. All right, and then I'm going to move my body. Okay, now the body still needs to be able to squash and stretch. Okay, so if I quickly unparent my tail from my body, hitting Y or selecting my manually selecting my pan behind tool, I'm going to move that anchor point to the bottom. Okay. 
we still need to be able to have this squash and stretch taking place. For whatever reason, now all of a sudden my scale values have changed. I don't know why that's the case. Probably because we deleted the, um, the null object. Okay, quickly check. So undo all this. When I keep this null object, um, and then I move my body. So if I just sort of turn off the null object, uh, okay, so the scales are gonna stay at 100. And I'm gonna leave it there. We don't need it. I'm just gonna lock it. Um, Move my body, make a guide for the floor. Body can snap to that. Y, drag it down to the bottom. There we go. Alrighty, unparent the tail from the body so that my scale can be affected from the floor. Okay, now we're gonna hide the tail. Okay, we're not working with the tail. We need to get the animation right for the body first, okay? Because this is the driving force. This is what is moving or propelling the tail. So it makes sense that we get this animation correct first, and then we have our tail react to what we animate from there. Alrighty, so I'm gonna select the body layer. I'm gonna hit P to bring up my position, and I'm gonna make a keyframe at the very beginning. Okay, now this is a little bit different from our ball bounce. We're not starting from the top anymore. Okay, we're starting from here at the bottom. And then at about one second, it's going to jump upwards. Okay, this is jumping very high. It's a super energetic fox. And at two seconds, it's going to hit the ground again. All right, and thanks to our layer and that view snap to guides is on, it automatically snapped to the floor for us. So we don't have to worry about it sinking into the ground. I'm then going to select my convert vertex tool and I'm going to remove the curves. Okay, I do this initially so that I can make sure that the top of my arc is in the middle. Alrighty, and then I can add the correct arc that I want to that. Clicking and dragging out to get these arms. That's looking about right. So I'll just let it go there. V for my selection tool. And now we can just play that back. Boom, boom. Alrighty, so the nice thing about having kept this null object is that at the end of this animation, I can always just recenter this slightly more to the right. You'll see that it starts quite far to the left and it ends closer to the middle than it does to the right. So we'll fix that towards the end. Okay, so we've got our initial bounce, but we now need to remember that we need a little bit of anticipation happening at the beginning. Okay, we don't just want this character jumping into midair for no reason. We kind of want this to emulate, for example, a cat getting ready to pounce on something. So we need a little bit of squash and stretch happening at the beginning, get a little bit of time for the tail to do something, and then we jump. Alrighty, so I'm gonna select all these keyframes, and I think I'm gonna move out by about 15 frames. So shift page down, or command shift uh, right arrow key for you Mac trolls. One, two, three, four, five, that's 15 frames. And I'm just gonna drag this keyframe out over here. All right, why have I done this? Because now I can jump 10 frames back and I can just make a dead key by sort of just clicking on this little empty diamond over here. Boom, it makes a key for me. I've got five frames of nothing happening. It gives our viewers time to see that this is where we should be looking. Then I've got 10 frames for the anticipation. This is where the squash and stretch is gonna take place. And then the jump takes place, all right. So this, I'm just going to tell hold, right? That's just acting as a reference for now. And I can select these keys, hit F9 or right click, keyframe assist, easy ease. Um, I'm gonna hit N at three seconds, right? So that we don't have this dead space at the end. Um, remembering that there is still going to be a little bit of anticipation or reaction at the end. So perhaps I can drag this out to four seconds and then trim comp to work area. So if I play this back, this ball jumps into there hangs for far too long and then lands on the ground. Now it's taking far too long for this jump to happen. Okay, so I think about 20 frames should be about right. So shift page down twice to jump 20 frames, shift that key up, and then maybe it's going to take as long to hit the ground. So 20 frames out, it hits the ground over here. That's, that's feeling about right for now. Okay. We obviously need to jump into our graph editor then so that we can get the timing of this right. Now, we've got our anticipation happening and then this creature is gonna shoot into the air. And the, antis the anticipation, excuse me, is a very important aspect to add because it helps prepare us for the sudden propulsion that is about to take place. Okay, so if we were to ignore the anticipation, 
Notice how that's a very jarring experience from nothing to that uh, in a very short amount of time, right? It, it can be used as shock value, right? So there's definitely a place for using this, but we kind of want to give our viewers a little bit of a warning that something's coming. All right, then we get to this area and again, we've got that dreadful hang. So I'm just going to drag this up a little bit so that it, there is a little bit of motion still happening. All right, that's feeling pretty good. Boom, boom. All righty. And then we want a little hop, skip and a jump at the end. All right, so um, I know that some of you sort of added a lot of bounces, but I kind of just want one little bounce to show that this creature is sort of... Um, allowing itself to dissipate that energy so it hits the ground over here okay and then i'm just going to drag out to three seconds for now um, i wanted to sort of jump into the air a little bit okay we could have it jumping straight up i'm going to have it jumping a little bit forward in this example just because i haven't done an example like this yet uh hits the ground again convert vertex tool add a little bit of an arc to that uh this is going to be a very um sort of short little jump okay so uh, i've even maybe moved this key a little bit too high let's have it uh, slightly off the ground like so um jumps into the air so if this took 20 frames then maybe this would only take 10 and 10 just to show that it's also taking less time and energy to do jumping back into the graph editor uh, let's think about this. So it hits the ground. Uh, it's going to leave the ground with a little bit of force as well. So we're going to drag this this way. We're going to drag that that way. And we're going to move this up as well so that it's not just stuck in midair. All right. So then if I play that back, we get the jump and the little bounce at the end. And that's hanging for a little bit too long. I don't want to play too much with the graph editor in this one. So instead, I'm just going to shift these up. Instead of taking 10 frames, let's just make it five. So remember to count one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. And we'll see how that works. Um, it's not working that great, actually. So maybe just eight and eight. Uh, that's that's not looking right. Ten, one, two, okay, and then ten, one, two. All right, that's looking a bit better. Okay, back into the graph editor. Let's just make sure that we've actually got it working correctly. Um, drag this out. Drag this. Here maybe, and there we go. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there are cats fighting outside my window. Apologize if you can hear it. Um, all right, so that's that's looking about right. I can now say that my first layer of this lasagna is done. All right. Um, I've just made myself really hungry for lasagna, so I've done my initial movement. Okay, I've got the position down and the timing down. Now, I need to add my squash and stretch, right? Because that is the next important thing. So I'm gonna use this little keyframe that I made here as reference, selecting my body, holding Shift and S to bring up the scale. I'm gonna make a keyframe, right click, toggle hold so I can block it out. It's a perfect circle at this point. Then, when we get here, I know that I want my character to have squashed itself down a little bit. Okay, so I'll drag this out, maybe make this like um, 110. I added 10 to the width, so I need to subtract it from the height, make that 90. Okay, so it's getting ready for that jump. Um, jumps into midair. And over here, it needs to be a perfect circle. So I'm just going to copy paste my perfect circle keyframe. It's going to hit the ground. Now it has fallen from a bit of a height, right? So we might then understand that this squash and stretch might be a little bit more intense. So maybe 115 and 85. Okay. Perfect circle at the top of this little bounce. And then squash when it hits the ground. Okay. Uh, subtle squash, so maybe like 105 and 95, and then one, two, three, a perfect circle again. Alrighty, so we've got those keys. I'm going to add easing to them by hitting F9, and we're going to just scrub through this. So we've got this little squash taking place. 
boom, this character then jumps. All right, so we want our stretch to then occur. As it leaves the ground, so maybe two frames or three frames later, we'll see now one, two. I'm just gonna copy paste this keyframe. We're gonna swap the values around so it's 90, 110. Remember, we are doing this now because we want it to look as though it's stretching out as it's shooting away from the, uh, from the ground. Boom turn to a perfect circle before it hits the ground right we don't want it to squash just yet so two frames beforehand I'm just gonna copy paste this keyframe it stretched itself out hits the ground uh, we've got a little hop skip and a jump happening over here so we might have a little bit of stretch okay not nearly as much though so this might just be 95 and 105 over here just to sell the idea that it is in fact stretching perfect circle and then we're not gonna add stretch there because it's not falling fast enough to have stretch. We're just gonna play with the easing of our uh, graph editor there. So, speaking of the dreaded graph editor, I'm gonna jump in here and let's take a look. This sort of initial anticipation is something that I might come back to play with a little bit later. All right, but for now, I think this kind of makes sense, actually. This character's sort of sinking into a pounce and it's easing itself there. So maybe we could have the motion take place a little bit sooner. Is this all the idea that it's settling down and getting ready, that the energy is being contained and is fighting to be released and then it jumps, boom. All right, that jump over there, I think we can leave. But again, what we did with the bouncing ball animation, we want most of our change to take place over here. All right, this is where the most speed is occurring. We're dissipating our energy as we get up here. And uh, we don't want to get the idea that um, the, <clears throat> the ball is, is only sort of becoming a perfect circle as it gets to the top, right? We sort of want it to be getting closer to a perfect circle by about here. And we translate that by simply dragging out these dots. I'm going to take it all the way to the right as far as I can. Um, my timeline. Okay, so we could probably stand to shift this up a little bit as well. Okay. There we go. Most of that change is happening. It's easing into a perfect circle up there. And now we need the opposite to take place on this side, right? So we'll just drag this in this direction, like so. And maybe drag these a little bit more out this way. Okay. So when I scrub through, we can see that it's not transforming too soon. All right, then it hits the ground. Bam! Slams down into the ground. Off the ground. Um, if I zoom in here, try and remember what I've told it to do. So it's gone from squashed. Then it is up into the air and it is stretched uh, and then it's becoming a perfect circle. It's kind of working at the moment, but this is a game of inches, ladies and gentlemen. We need to sweat the small stuff as motion designers. So we're just going to add a little bit of easing there so that it occurs sooner. And it eases into that perfect circle. And then as we move away from that, um, we want that sort of squash because we haven't added a stretch key here remember if i undo this quickly it squashes down to hit the floor so this only happens when it hits the ground it makes sense then that we shift our keys to be flush with the wall there and we tell it that it's only gonna change once it hits the ground boom all right and we get that nice little pop on the end so that's looking pretty good so this is effectively what we have done is we've just recreated the bouncing ball exercise. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm fairly happy with that for now. Now we can jump into the tail animation. All right, now the tail animation is uh, something that confused a lot of people because we started using the puppet pin tool, right? And this is a a difficult tool, right? Uh, it's it's something that we we seldom use, right? Because it can be quite difficult. Um, so don't sort of be too afraid of it, but let's let's see what we can do. So we're going to turn the tail back on. Um, I'm just going to deselect my puppet pin tool for now so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Select my tail and we're going to move the anchor point for the tail because we do sort of want to have the option of adding rotation and we don't want the, the rotation to sort of happen in the middle of the tail, right? So tail obviously rotates from the root so I'm just going to move the anchor point to where the root of that tail would be now 
if we parent the tail to the body right the squash and stretch of that body affects the tail now this is something that we can get away with i'm not going to penalize you for this okay if we are doing our animation with the puppet pin tool correctly we shouldn't really notice that squash and stretch however for the perfectionists out there and there is no bashing happening i i'm a fan of the perfectionists what we want to do is we want to tell this sort of tail that it needs to um it, its position is the only thing that should be affected when parented to the body all right so how do we do that we jump into expressions again and this is something that's uh that terrified a lot of my monday class i'm going to hit p to bring up my position on my tail i'm going to hold down alt right the alt button and i'm going to click on the little stopwatch over here and then this opens my expression option right we don't have to type anything in thankfully there's no coding involved in this we get this little pick whip tool over here we're going to click it and we're going to drag it to the position over here now when i let go and then i click away it's going to change where my tail for some reason my tails disappeared all the way over here right but you can see that it is in fact moving along with the body so we just need to fix the position now. We need to tell it that even though the uh, the position of the tail is being affected by the body, it shouldn't be all the way out here. We do that by changing the position of the anchor point. So I can just hold down shift and sort of drag this number up over here. Because you'll notice that when I move, uh, try and move the position of the tail, it doesn't do anything. Right, it's locked in place to the body. So I just need to shift the anchor point. Um, you'll notice that the anchor point's not moving, but the body of the tail is. Okay, and that just means that my anchor point is locked to the position of this ball. So by telling it that the anchor point needs to reference the tail body in a different space, we can move the tail back in place. And now, oh dear, that's not looking too great. Alrighty, so I have figured it out for whatever reason in After Effects. Because we jumped straight into the ball and tail comp that After Effects made for us, when I parent specifically the position of the tail to the position of my ball, it throws it all the way out here for some reason. Okay, so instead, I'm going to select my layers quickly so that we don't lose the animation that we've done. Hit Control C to copy those layers, Control N to make a new composition say okay and we're just going to paste those layers in here right now you'll notice that the animation is exactly the same there's no difference to what we've done but when i hit position to bring up the position value for the body so we can see those keys in fact i'm going to reselect the layer and hit u so that that i bring up my position and scale i then grab my uh, tail over here and when i hit p alt click on the p position and then i parent this to position over here click away you'll notice that for whatever reason it no longer jumps as far away okay and this means that our animation is not going to break okay so bringing up the anchor point by hitting a i am then going to just adjust where this tail should be like so okay now when i play my animation boom my tail follows along to the body without squashing and stretching you'll notice okay so now I need to add my puppet pin tool so that this entire animation culminates in a nice little swishing action. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select my tail and I'm going to select my puppet pin tool. All right, I've got show mesh on. I'm just going to turn that off for now. I'm going to place a, a pin at the root. Okay, we get a little yellow dot over there, which we can see. I'm going to place one in sort of the middle of the bulge, uh, or the middle of the tail rather, so about here, and then one on the tip. Okay, we only want three for these objects, and that's because if we have more than that, we start getting weird little aberrations when we change it. But for now, this will allow for some nice little swishing animation. Okay. So I am going to just collapse the ball layer. I'm going to lock it so that I can't change anything. Reselect tail and the, the tail layer. Hit U so that I can see the keyframes that I've just placed on it. Alrighty. And I am then going to just sort of select one of these keys and I'm going to turn when I have my 
puppet pin tool selects, I'm going to turn the mesh back on. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so this mesh is just a visual indicator of all these different little triangles that we're working with. And these triangles would allow us to deform this shape. Currently, my expansion is set to 12. Um, I think that the generic setting is 10. If I were to take this down to 1, for example, um, we can see that it is sitting just on the outline. The expansion is how many triangles, how far the triangles move beyond the actual outline of the shape. So when I sort of animate this, uh, it's looking pretty good, but I find that sort of having the expansion out just a little bit helps to smooth out a little uh, sort of our shape. So if I were to pull it a little bit too far, then at least it's not gonna crimp over here, for example. Alrighty. Then we've got the number of triangles. Now in my version of After Effects, I can add as many triangles as I want. I believe I can take it up to um, a thousand and uh, it will then try to do that. And hopefully my PC is not gonna crash. Okay, um, but we could take this down to 10. And if we have this to 10, you're gonna see that this is not gonna look too great, right? It's looking pretty shitty at the moment. Notice how wherever these lines meet, we're getting um, some horrible little effects going on. But as soon as I take this back up to like 500, I get a nice curve going on. Okay, so if you're having little crimping issues or sort of like little geometric issues, then that is the way to do it. I'm just gonna hit Control Z to undo, please undo. Doesn't wanna undo. I'm just gonna have to reset this to where I thought it was, around about here, and set this back to 500. Okay. I now have my tail and I've got my keys. Alrighty. And we're gonna think about this. Okay, so I'm actually, I am gonna bring up my my keys for my position and scale on the body just so I can use those as a guide. And we can see that this is where our anticipation's happening. All right, we've got our body squashing down, getting ready to pounce. And I've already set my keys for a normal looking tail at rest at the beginning. Okay, so I am going to drag out to where we are in our position for um, that nice little anticipation and I'm just going to adjust my keys a little bit and I'm going to have my tail drag upwards kind of like this okay now I know that when a cat sort of gets ready to pounce it's more flicking its tail from side to side but the reason why I'm doing this upward motion during the anticipation is that when our body shoots away we can then have this tail snap down boom it's snapping like so and that snap into a sudden opposite position sells the idea that in fact the body is dragging the tail back right the body is dragging the tail down and in fact this tip would actually kind of be something like that instead now something to keep in mind with the puppet pin it is very easy to uh, lose our sense of proportion. All right, it's a, it's a mistake that we all make. It's a very it's very easy to stretch this out of position. All right, so we do need to keep that in mind as we go. So we've got a nice little anticipation happening, and then we slam downwards. So this would kind of be like so, I think. Okay. Now, notice that for these points, when I have this option. On, right I think we have to have this on in CC in order to see our path we do still have an option to add curves right and this is very important especially for the tip of the tail because what happens is it can suck in on itself and we lose the idea of an actual swish taking place so with the convert vertex tool I'm just gonna click and drag and I'm gonna add an outward stretch so that my tip all right don't take that out of context um, the tip of my tail rather moves away from the body. It doesn't suck in on itself. We don't lose that volume. We still get that nice sort of swishing motion. Okay, so what's happening next, right? We've got uh, the anticipation taking place. Uh, it then sort of shoots away. And the next time that this tail might change is over here. Right, and this is where the tail sort of caught up to the body. So I'm just gonna copy paste these keyframes simply because then I have something to work with. Zoom in and let's then adjust. So I'm gonna drag this up here. I think that this tail might sort of react to catching up with the body. It might sort of flop over a little bit like so. Uh, this curve is looking a little strange. Uh, and then this is this is actually a very cool point. So, 
If I were to try and change this arm, notice how it's also affecting this. Okay, and that's because I'm using my selection tool. But with the convert vertex tool, I can make a change to that arm without affecting the previous position. Okay, and that makes life uh, a little bit easier. So if you're having constant trouble with your paths, convert vertex tool, as you can see here, can break it sometimes, but for the most part, it is your friend. Sorry, I hit the wrong key there. Okay, so it is now shooting upwards. And it is now sort of taking place over here. We can play with our graph editor so we get our timing right. But for now, it is then going to start falling. Uh, and as it falls, it's going to then eventually hit the ground. And when it hits the ground, this is where we're going to offset our flap. So I think that I could add a couple of keys maybe right here. Let's copy paste these. And I just want to sort of change the position of that curve so that we're getting the idea that um, a change has taken place. Okay, it's not sitting in the right place at the moment, but we are going to play with our rotation in a moment, which might help us. Okay, select my convert vertex tool. Just make sure that we're constantly working with arcs for the tip of the tail at least. Uh, I could probably stand to do a little bit of arc work for this uh, one as well, but for now I think that this is working. It then hits the ground, okay, and as it hits the ground, the tail is going to react to that sudden change. Um, so, what I want to do is, I'm just going to copy paste these keyframes here, so that I've got them. While this ball is bouncing upwards, I then want to give the idea that the tail is reacting to that sudden change of um, direction. Okay, so I'm just going to select these, play with the curve so that it is constantly moving away from the body and then as it's falling it's going to rise back up so i can copy paste these keyframes just to help get that idea um, maybe i'll have it going in this direction just to try and sell that please don't crash thank you okay And then it's going to settle and come back down to be on the ground at rest. Okay, and I'm just going to quickly get that arc out again. Alright, so this end piece is arguably the most difficult. Alright, and this is where we need to spend most of our time doing the refinement. So naturally we're going to procrastinate and we're going to do it last. I want to go back to the beginning of my animation and I kind of just want to play through and see I could probably exaggerate that a little bit more All right it jumps upwards and uh, we're sort of just gonna end our animation here for now so we can sort of just focus here at the beginning so I'm gonna select my layer hit shift R to bring up the rotation as well make a keyframe while that's taking place let's just push it slightly in this direction All right snap takes place we'll push it in the opposite direction so it kind of looks like it's being dragged we want to make sure that it's still connected to the body though so we can then shift this keyframe in just to make sure it's still attached okay and maybe what's happening here because it's kind of not looking too correct maybe it would look a little bit more if we had the arc going in this direction that so it builds up um, maybe I could swap this around so that this is actually up here like this so it's being ready Boom. snaps okay but there we see that the tip sort of moving in on itself so we just need to make sure that that moves away from the body All right, always moving away from the body Boom. that gives us the nice idea of the tail snapping and you can see that I was under the complete wrong or not wrong but um, I had like a completely different idea and there's nothing wrong with blocking out our animation going back and cha making changes to try and sell the visual idea of the motion so that's then moving as it's getting up here our rotation is now in the wrong place again so I'm just going to reset this to zero so we can see what this should be doing uh, it comes up 
think that's kind of looking right. Maybe we should push this maybe just a little bit more. We don't want it to be stuck too much into the body. Um, so there, and then I think maybe we can just push, sorry, um, let's just select these keys and we can just reposition the keys. Right, so that's gonna affect the animation. Then, cool, that's taking place. And we'll focus on that last bit at the end there. Alrighty, so focusing on the last bit over here. So I need to get some tea there, my throat is dying. Alright, so this is looking fairly okay for now. We need to add some rotation to the body, but we'll get there. For now, we need to just ease out this little rotation here. So this is looking wrong. Okay, this tail movement at the very end here is looking quite incorrect. As the body's moving upwards, this tail would be rotating up. Okay, so what we actually need this to be doing is it slams into the ground, it moves down, so maybe this should be happening a little bit sooner, and then by the time it gets here, it's raised um, up again, so it's kind of up here, uh, like so. That would actually take place as it begins to fall, so... Boom. Okay, something strange happening there. We really don't want to overcomplicate it if we can help it. Okay, so that rotation is happening there, that's happening there, and as it's falling down, maybe we're just sort of changing that position a little bit, just so that we've got a bit of a change between there, and then it comes down. Right, I think that's kind of looking quite right. So we've added a couple of keys, just to get the idea of that little motion taking place there. All right, so hopefully we play that back and we get the idea of a tail reacting. Okay, it's a little extreme at the end. Uh, here, this is moving a little bit too much. So let's just turn that down a little bit. Maybe adding a little bit of rotation. Um, actually no, because we're gonna be adding rotation to the body. So let's take a look at that section over there. And for now, that's kind of working for me. I can always go back and refine it later. So I'm just gonna add easing because easing makes life beautiful. Right, and that's added a little bit. But there's one thing that's missing, right? The idea that this body is not rotating as it's moving upwards. We're not getting that idea, and it's it's kind of breaking the illusion for us. Alrighty. So, what I can do, the same way that I um, sort of had my tail position parented to just the position of the ball, I can also parent the rotation of my tail to the rotation of the ball. So maybe the little rotations that I've done aren't necessarily adding as much as they should. I don't want to lose the work I've done, so I'm going to select the rotation keyframes, Control X or Command X to cut them. All right, that way I can always paste them back. Right, I haven't lost them. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring up some keys for my rotation for the ball. Uh, I'm going to hide, well actually I, I need the tail so I can actually see because otherwise we won't see the rotation of the ball. I'm going to Alt click rotation for the ball and I'm just going to parent that rotation for the ball to the rotation uh, to the rotation of the tail to the rotation of the ball. Now, when I rotate the body, the tail rotates as well. Okay, and that's actually what we're going to be doing. So, if I take a look at this, we've got this nice little anticipation happening. But then as it's jumping, we could probably then stand to just drag that key up over there. And while this is jumping, let's tilt it back a little bit. Minus, maybe minus 20 is a bit extreme, maybe minus 15. Just to give the sense that the, the tip of the nose of this creature is actually pointing in the direction that it's flying. All right. Then we get to the top of the arc. All right. So by here, it needs to be at zero again, right? So it sort of evened itself out. Um, just before it hits the ground, we could have this at positive 15. So it's actually pointing downwards. In two frames, we're going to copy paste the rotation where it's normal again. And then on the end, I don't think we need rotation here. This is the idea of just like this little thing just going boing forward just to dissipate that energy. So we're going to add some easing to this rotation and we are going to jump into its graph editor and we're going to take a look at what we can do. So most of the rotation is going to take place at the beginning, right? It's the same sort of timing as we've got on the scale. So we're just going to push this out over here. Okay, so most of that rotation takes place there, 
In fact, maybe more in the middle. Like so. Maybe we can get away with a little bit of a snap motion going on. Oh, that's, that's not looking too bad. Playing around with it, seeing what it does. And the same sort of thing is happening here. But it might happen a little bit sooner. Let's see what happens. No, it's going to happen later. That's what it's going to do. Uh, no, I'm wrong. It's back this way. Okay, so it's going to sort of then very quickly rotate down, correct itself and bounce. And by adding this little finesse, we help sell this ball and tail idea. Okay, so I could probably still do a little bit of work on the tail at the end. Um, but for now, I think it's looking okay. I think the confusing thing is that when this rotation happens, uh, we need the tip of the tail to actually be lower than the center of the tail. We kind of need it to be uh, over here about. So if I just play with that, maybe that looks a little bit as so it the ground, it flaps a little bit too extreme. I'm losing my volume, so I'm just going to quickly adjust that. It flaps. And then we get that. And I think then we've got the refinement down. There we go. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. Again, however, we've got our little fox jumping through the void. It's a little scary, right? We don't necessarily want that. Um, at the same time, we also don't want, uh, if we sort of turn on our tile action safe, we don't want most of the animation to be happening on the left-hand side of the screen. Okay, so we did copy and paste our layers into a new composition. All right, so I just need to right click, new, null object. And because the tail is technically not parented to, to the ball, right, only its position and rotation are, we can parent both of these to the null and we can just shift them up a little bit using the null. It's not gonna break our animation. And that helps to sort of sell it a little bit more. That looks a little bit more visually sort of interesting. All right, and then we can add a background and a floor because we obviously want this little fox to exist within a stage. We don't want it to just be in space. So, control Y to bring up solid. All right, so that's the shortcut to, to add a solid. Alternatively, we could go layer, new, uh, solid. All right, but we need to start using our shortcuts. Control Y. I'm going to use the dark blue again. Drag that layer to the bottom. Right, this blue is kind of complementing our fox, so I think it's working quite well. And then I will duplicate it, control shift Y to bring up the new solids color settings. And let's make this one lighter. Actually, no, a little bit darker, even darker. There we go. Dark is good. And uh, we're just going to then shift that down, put it into a believable floor position. A little bit of overlap might be nice. And now I have a fox jumping in an actual scene. And even though that scene is very simple, it adds to the entire aesthetic appeal and there's a couple of extra marks involved. Alrighty. Now, for the, ta for the, for the sound of this, okay, I have quickly downloaded for you guys. I'll make it available. All right, so if I can find it, free transition sound effects. This is what we're gonna be using for our swishing sound. Um, and we're going to be using the actual ball bounce sound for the contact again. Alrighty, so I want to double click on this and you'll notice that we sort of solo it now. We've, we've soloed this footage and I can scrub through this and I can play it and listen to all the different sounds. Okay, try and find one that might work for our little fox. Definitely not. Um, it could be comical to have a little ping pong ball at the end. So I am then going to use this little in point to cut that there. And I'll just set an out point on the end. And then to get this into my composition, I am going to just hit ripple insert. And that drags that little section down for me. I can drag that to the bottom. Hit LL. And we don't need that many bounces, right? So I'm just going to hit Alt, open square bracket to cut that, 
Alt, close square bracket to cut that. I'm gonna turn the visual off so we don't see that horrible little ball in the background. Okay. Oh, it looks like the ripple has broken our little background here. So I'm just gonna quickly drag those back. Okay, so. Um, we're going to have a swish over here. It doesn't make sense for a contact sound to be made as the ball leaves, but it does make sense over here. So I'm just going to drag this layer out over here. So let's take a look at that. Yeah. Um, we could make this a little bit softer. Okay, so it's not as harsh. So maybe just like a minus 10. Okay. And then it comes into contact one more time at the end over here. So control D, L, L, so I can see it. Drag it over here. Um, let's just zoom in. Does that work? Not really. Um, one frame later. Okay. And then this one we can have at uh, maybe like minus 20 because it's a very soft landing. Alrighty, so we've now got our little bouncing ball sound and already that's gonna add, it's gonna add something to it. All right, the next thing that we wanna do is this free transition audio that I'm gonna give you. That is loud, wow, okay. Um, so I am just going to find a way to affect it. Can't do it that way. I apologize. Uh, so instead of doing it this way, we're going to bring it in down here. And we're going to drag our master volume down so that it's a lot softer. Okay, I'm just going to mute our bounces so we don't have those. Um, Control K to bring up our options. This audio is about uh, two minutes long, so I'll just add that. And now I can jump into my waveforms and see where the swish that I want to use is. Let's get past the intro of that video. Um, we're going to have to drag out our workspace so that we can actually have the entire audio in our view. I'm just going to end it there. We'll trim our workspace here. And here we're starting to see our little swishes. Okay, so let's see what we've got. A bit too slow. Nope. Nah, that could work. That's a bit too violent. Also a little bit too violent. Uh, we kind of want to just try and find a swish that matches the motion, right? It's not a very fast motion. That might work. Yeah. I think this could work. So I'm just going to hit Alt, close square bracket, uh, open square bracket, Alt, close square bracket, and we are going to drag this layer back here. Our animation ends on the four second mark, trim comp, and now we can take a look and see where does our swishes take place. It starts over here, so we can have this here. Right, that works quite well. And then over here we've got an impact sound and that impact forces a very forceful swish. So I think we can duplicate this audio. I'll, I'll drag it out over here. Okay. And then on the very end as well, we've got one final swish taking place that's sort of really noticeable, but that swish is gonna be quite soft. Okay, so we're gonna bring this down to about minus 35. And it's just a whisper, it's just a hint of a sound. Turn on our ball bounces again. Okay. Okay, so I'm definitely not putting a lot of effort into the audio mixing in this. Uh, we could definitely refine this a lot further. But I think that for now we get the point. All right, so we've done our ball bounce. Okay, so essentially we've just re-practiced our bouncing ball animation. Um, and then we added our tail, right? There are Illustrator files that we brought in. We copied those layers into a new composition so that we didn't get that weird um, sort of uh, position glitch when we uh, linked our position of our tail to the position of our um, ball. All right, so if I bring up my position, we sort of alt-clicked to bring up the expression. We parented that to the position of the body. And then we used the Puppet Pin tool to add some uh, flare to that tail so we could get the, the actual swish going. So hopefully that has covered our questions over that. All right. Um, then in the next video, 
we'll be covering the walk cycle. Alright, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.